Hey y'all, welcome back to Mirror Expressions, a channel where I take the time to share a little bit of myself with you all. And I invite you all to do the same with me. Go ahead, hit that thumbs up button, hit subscribe if you have not subscribed and let your girl know how you are doing. Like if you are doing fantabulous, Go ahead and put me a mirror emoji in the chat so I know that, hey, okay, I'm good. It's all good over here. But if you have not, if you're not feeling your best, not feeling A1, not feeling yourself, whatever the case may be, you know I'm going to tell you, do what you must to get back to a healthier version of yourself. Keyword being healthier. All right. So that don't mean just go out and be wild and that. Do what you must to get back to a healthier. Like that's what we want to see. The healthier version of yourself. All right, y'all. We are not going to waste any time. Let's just go ahead. Get straight into it. Real Housewives of Atlanta. Season 15. Episode 2. Sisters Before Misters. Okay. <laughs> you all will see who they well, they say this by the end of this review. So we start right back up at this party that we left off with last week, right? We left with Kenya, Mayada, and Sheree talking, right? About Martel being in her DMs and supposedly speaking or having a relationship with someone else in down to the Atlanta. And then we left off also with uh, Candy and the girl Courtney getting into it, right? So we're picking up right there, right? Sh Sheree, Sheree, I mean, stop, Sheree. <laughs> Sheree has just called Martel over to where they're sitting there talking. Kenya is kind of giving um, Sheree more details about him sliding into her DMs. And then on the other hand, on the other end, we see Candy and Courtney still at it. So that's where we are, right? Sheree tells Martel that um the lady told him that he was dating someone else in Atlanta. And he said, Well, every time I'm in Atlanta, I'm with you. So the other shorty is pretty much getting the short end of the stick. Y'all, I believe every <laughs> every word that he is saying because look i know he was trying to be facetious when he said that comment but i believe it there is another woman and she is getting the short end of the stick because he is spending the majority of his time with you right he sees more benefit with being with you right i.e being on this whole nother tv show Make sure he's staying relevant and in the news versus whatever benefits he's getting from the other woman, which is probably just some tail. And so when he says she's getting the short end of the stick, he was trying to be funny, but I believe there was truth to that. <laughs> so anyway, my yellow wasn't going for the bull either. She she was just like, mm, she felt like he was lying to pretty much. And so, uh, Sonya is over with uh, the la the other ladies that were getting into it. Like, Courtney, like, because at this point, I think Candy has walked away. So, Sonya's with Courtney. And so, she she decides she better go check on Candy. <laughs> Uh, and I'm thinking like, well, dang, you know, ain't that your friend anyway? Like, why didn't you go with her and check on her versus stay with this lady you supposedly just met with Sheree? You know what I'm saying? Like, mm, some, some didn't seem too, too right right there either. But anyway, so, uh, Candy is over there all upset, of course. <laughs> she has been activated. <laughs> Todd is trying to calm her down. He got his little hand on her shoulder. And, uh, so Candy said she was annoyed with Sonya, right? For letting her walk blindly into some mess. So her whole thing is like, Sonya, you knew what was up. You already knew this was an issue. Why you didn't at least tell me beforehand or whatever? And so... <laughs> Sonya is trying to be the clean up woman. Uh, 
Well, well, I only met her this week with Sheree and Don Juan all in the background talking about, well, yep, that explains it. She's Sheree's friend. That's why she was bouncing. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, but yeah, again, it was pretty much like, look, son, you could have given me the heads up. You know what I'm saying? So... Sonya goes to tell the other girls about the breakdown between Candy and Courtney, right? Like, um, when I say the other girls, I'm talking about uh, Kenya, Mayetta, and Sheree, right? Because remember, they're all talking about the whole Martell of the whole situation. So, she goes, lets them know they just got into it, right? And so, um, they all come to where Candy is, and Candy is, you know, explaining to them what happened. Dumb walk, dumb one talking about the Candy Anna that came out. I don't know what that is. Maybe that's her alter ego when she gets gets activated. Uh, so anyway, Marlo said, "How is how am I the only one behaving?" I'm thinking like now, Marlo, you I ain't gonna necessarily say you behaving. You are the only one not actively participating. But you had your hand in it telling that girl she need to go and confront Candy. You know what I'm saying? And then standing by, ear hustling and making sure the job is being done. Baby, my law, you better get on. <laughs> your hands are not clean, boo-boo. So Sonya comes back to the group. Um... Because they're still talking about Courtney and Candy. She had stepped out for a minute and did a whole outfit change. So, she's back. But, you know, she does not stay. She be like, baby, I have to leave because this is my husband's birthday party. In other words, I ain't got time for y'all miss today. <laughs> I'm laughing, but honey... That would have been me too. Like, I ain't got time for the drama. We are celebrating my boo thing. Like, no. It's not going down right now. And I'm not going to be no parts of it. So, anyway. They're still there. Um, So, then the conversation kind of shifts from what happened with Candy and Courtney to Martel, right? So, Sheree is now asking Candy about it. You know, how she heard that he was had another person there in Atlanta. And so uh, Candy's thing is that Sheree has said in the past that she wants to know these things. Like if there is something like that going on, she wants to know. And Sheree was just like, yeah, I do, but make sure there are receipts. You know what I'm saying? Don't just be coming at me with no hearsay, you know? You know what I'm saying? So Candy asked, well, how did she feel about Martell sliding into Kenya's DMs. So Martell was denying it, saying that uh Kenya probably accepts everybody messages, i.e. she out here in these streets bad. Just bad. Spreading it wide for everybody basically. <laughs> so he's denying it. He did not get into her DMs, right? Candy tells him, well, pull it up. Pull it up. Let's see. So he goes to his phone and he opens it up and he's acting all surprised. Oh, I did DM you, but that was two years ago. And then the message that they end up showing was it wasn't anything like flirtatious. It was something like, um, I'm kind of like maybe like a thank you for doing something or something she did on TV or said. And, I don't know. It's, it was one of them like, I'm going to send a message and see if she responds. It was like one of those type of things, basically. So, to me, I don't think that was the only message. I think there was another one that was deleted that was probably a lot more direct as far as him wanting to try to hook up with her and or have something with her, right? And, uh, cause I'm just curious, like, how did he and Sheree meet? Like, did we ever get that rundown? If we did, I don't remember. If somebody remembers, 
put it in the comments because I don't. But I'm thinking he probably made sure right the same way. He just slid into them DMs. And it seems like he done tried multiple times with Kenya because he still had that one. And I bet when he starts talking to Sheree is when he deleted the other more direct message. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, um, so yeah, so, uh, Candy and her confessional was just like, that, that, that don't mean anything. Like, basically, she doesn't believe Martell either. She believes that there was another message as well, right? Um, Martell, he, he wants to start getting high. He starts yelling and walking up on Kenya, then walking away. And I was just like, what the hell is going on? Yelling and, and talking about he doesn't care if he was trying to elf her two years ago. Why are they talking about it? It was two freaking years ago. And Kenya is like, did you just curse at me? Are you disrespecting the queen? <laughs> Oh goodness. So it just came became like this big old shouting match between the two of them, right? And so um Kia is um she tells Sheree, you know, you're messing with the same type of man. And we get a flashback of Bob talking crazy to Sheree. Y'all remember that time they were uh I think they were uh, on a, a trip. And Bob was in the car talking about how he didn't choke her out enough. And then he's laughing about it. Um, so we get a flashback to that, right? And uh, Kenya said, the way he's talking to me now, talking about Martell, the way he's talking to me now is how he will eventually talk to you. And all I can say was facts. Because that's that's who he is that's that's his true colors coming out like to me when you see a person angry like how they handle themselves when upset says a lot and if that's how he would speak to kenya that's eventually how he's he, he will speak to sharon they probably just have not had a big argument or fight. And I do. I believe that wholeheartedly. That's just who he is. And so, um, you know, like I said, I don't watch the other show he's on. Um, I've never seen it. Um, uh, but I will say this, that his behavior is so bad that it precedes him that I've heard about it, that I'm aware of it. So yeah, Sheree, watch out. Watch out, girl. So next we see Drew finally. <laughs> she looks so beautiful. She's coming home from Chicago. Um, Apparently her dad is uh, sick, like Ralph mentioned that last episode. Um, But we learned that he has Alzheimer's. And he is now in a nursing home. And she just kind of talks about that a bit, like how it was seeing him in a nursing home and also how that kind of creates hardships for her family, especially her mom. And she said, you know, her dad doesn't remember her all of the time, but she ended up playing him a song that she's singing on and he immediately knew it was her singing. And I said, music is still the glue that's connecting them in moments of lucidity. You know what I'm saying? And that is absolutely real. Like, I work in the healthcare field. And I've specialized in the geriatric population uh, for, I'm going to say about 20 years. Oh my goodness. That makes me feel so old. Let's drop that to 15 years. <laughs> I'm saying it's closer to 15 years. 
like uh it probably really is because there was a period in there that i did oncology nursing as well as i worked in the or for a quick stint um so yeah maybe we're gonna go we're gonna go with 15 years but anyway I say all that to say this, those with Alzheimer's, especially like in the early stages and sometimes for the long, but usually in those early stages, it's, 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 it, when you put music on, especially from their era, like music they grew up on, it's like a whole new person comes to life, like right in front of your eyes. Music is truly universal. Thinking about just multiple people, different backgrounds, diversity, ages, but even within a person themselves, like who they are today minus versus who they were yesteryears. Like it still speaks. So yeah, music is truly universal. But anyways, um... So Drew <clears throat> gets to her confessional and she talks to us about the history she has had with music. Like, don't get it twist, twisted. She said, don't put me in no box, boo-boo. Acting is not all I do. I have been singing my entire life. And then, y'all, she goes on to say, I have been writing and producing or did she say recording i've been writing and recording music since i was three i'm like come on now Drew, you taking things too far girl you've been writing music since you were three girl you probably couldn't even spell your name your four letter name at the age of three <laughs> say what now I've been writing and recording since the age of three. Girl, gone on. <laughs> anyway, she tells us about this girl group that she was a part of. And so, uh, the producer asked her, was she the Beyonce in the group? She was like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Drew does have a pretty singing voice. She may have been the Beyonce in the group. So, anyway... Now she's back at the singing thing. It is something that she and Ralph are doing together, right? He has written and produced her latest song. And so she said the two of them are doing good. Like, especially when it comes to music. Like, music has helped to heal their marriage in, in some kind of aspect. She said the best place, they're in the best place they have been in the whole eight years they have been together. And I'm just like, really? That is sad. That really is sad. Because it just makes me think about the things we have seen transpire or happen within their marriage just on camera. And then think about... If this is the best place you've been in for the last eight years, like eight years is a long time to not have been in the greatest of places. Like this is the great place. And then thinking about what we know today that, you know, they're foul for divorce. And I'm just like, was well, this the calm before the ultimate storm? You know what I'm saying? So sad. So sad. But anyways, um, uh, <clears throat> I think she said, um, by them focusing on doing music together, it has just pretty much alleviated them from focusing on their issues. And I'm just like, with well, Drew, that's the problem right there. Like you can't, you can't just not to focus in on problems that y'all are having. Like you have to focus on them. You have to face them. You have to resolve Find some type of resolve and be able to move on. You can't just ignore sweet things under a rug 
and divert your attention elsewhere because at the end of the day, that stuff is still going to be under the rug and you're going to consistently pile stuff under there and it's eventually all just going to come out in one big time, you know, anyways. And so, um, yeah, so anyways, they talk about Ross's party. Ralph mentions how he met his cousin, Courtney. <laughs> Y'all, that is so funny because I just don't know if I believe that. But anyway, hey, they are supposedly cousins and <laughs> so we just go wrong with it. So anyway, he talks about that. They talk about the altercation with Candy. And Drew was just like, what happened? Who made her mad? <laughs> and Ralph was like, you know, I think it was my cousin Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> Drew said, baby, don't pitmans are crazy. I bet you know, boo. I bet you know. So Candy and um Sonya meet up for lunch. We learned that they have traveled together recently. They've taken their family to uh family to Disney together. <clears throat> and we also find out that well, Sonya's husband wants to have their home to themselves in his words it's not about them being here but it's about us building here i know that's right ross i know that's right and i don't blame like i couldn't imagine living with that many different people under the same roof like you got three different families and that many different women. Think about it. Women, basically, y'all, everybody knows we lead the ha the families. We really lead the families. The women do. We're the ones that's going to hold it together. Like, you know, if you're in that traditional mind, mind frame, or, okay, you're going to let your husband believe that he's leading the family. But we all know it's the women. And so to have that many women you got Sonya with her family. You got her sister with her family. And their mother with her husband. There were many women trying to rule the roost. I, I just cannot see it. But anyway, Sonya's saying it's tricky. And I'm thinking, like, why? Because as we find out, her mom wants to move anyway. Her mama wants to go to Florida to live. Um, supposedly the sister is ready to get gone too. So what's tricky, Sonya? The people ready to go. Let them folks go. Apparently it's Sonya. She's the one holding these people hostage. <laughs> she is the one holding these folks hostage in her home. Like why? <laughs> She's used to having these people in her fingertips. That's what it is. I said, honey, let it go. Cut them apron strings, right? Candy brings up Todd and the issues that they've been having. Him not really feeling supported by her. And so, um, anyway, they end up talking about the party. I said, good, because enough of being around the bush with all this small talk. Just get to the real reason why y'all sitting down having lunch. Because we all know it was talking about their party, right? So, Candy called <laughs> Courtney a bomber head. <laughs> and Sonya brings up, Sonya brings up how they were at Sheree's house. Apparently, some more stuff was said that we didn't really get to see, y'all. Apparently, Courtney told them that there was some place of business that Candy went to. They 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 uh they called it they called well they called the name when they showed the playback of Courtney talking about the situation, right? So I don't really remember the name of the place. I don't know if it's like a club, a lounge, a restaurant. They didn't really say, but anyway, so it's something like that. So apparently Candy went there. She tweeted about it. And so Courtney said the next week it was full of ghetto people. 
See, I, 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 I knew I didn't like Courtney. I knew I did not like her. Like, first of all, who are you to call somebody ghetto? Second of all, who are you to attribute a certain atmosphere to Candy just because she was there and she tweeted about it? You know what I'm saying? So, apparently, Candy brought out the riffraff, right? So, Candy wants to know, well, Sonya, what did you say to Courtney when she was saying all of this, right? And Courtney said, well, uh, 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 I, I told her that you were my friend and that she needs to have a conversation with you. And she did that. Now, Sonya. I think you're adding some things because we definitely did not see you do anything to take up for candy. Now, uh, they could have edited some things out or just did not, it didn't get shown. But in that footage that we saw, you were laughing right along with Sheree. That's what we saw. So candy said, no, nah, you didn't take up for me. And I said, nope, and she did. <laughs> so you said, well, she just kept digging the hole, y'all. She said, well, I did. Uh, I did. I, I told her I feel like Candy wouldn't say that. And, and <laughs> she kept digging this hole, y'all. She did goes on a mission. I, I thought that uh, Courtney brought that up because of the whole Thing with uh candy being worldwide and how the people that came wasn't worldwide and I, I saw you just stop just stop you did not do anything or say anything to take up for candy you know what i'm saying just say you did not and move on so candy said i doubt it. you were you were not taking up for me and wasn't <laughs> she said because um she already she already hanging out with Marlo and Sheree. So she was probably somewhere talking about, <laughs> y'all so dirty. Now this is what Candy had said, a confessional. And all I could think was, Candy, baby, that's exactly what we saw too. Cordy had to say what she had to say. And um, she was like, oh, <laughs> that's exactly what happened, Candy. So Sonya, we see her back at the house. She's FaceTiming Ross. Um, she says she's kind of made it to a good place about uh, wanting to have another baby with him because, you know, last season that was kind of their storyline. He wanted a baby. She didn't. So she says she's at a place. She wants to have another baby. But things have kind of been hard as far as trying to get it in to make it happen because... Ross is back and forth a lot between, I think she said, Austin. He's starting up a new company down there or something. So, anyway, we just kind of see them talk about that. Um, and next we get Candy and Todd. They go visit Blaze, right? Candy said that uh, she's just kind of talking about the atmosphere of Blaze, how things have been popping for a while. Um, they've um, It's located um, in the urban area of Atlanta. And so... She was just saying, yeah, things were great for a while. Pandemic hit. And then since then, it's, it's just kind of been on a downward slide. And so just trying to renew things, get the um, patronage back up. They have revamped like the menu. So Candy and Todd are there to kind of try the new items on the menu, right? Um, uh, as they're talking and waiting, we learn that Todd is about to open a new Mexican restaurant. And Candy is like, wow, what is with you and all these restaurants, right? And he said, pretty much it's because of the money. And insert, Todd was looking extremely tired. Or oh, was that just me? Did y'all notice that too? Like he was. I was like, oh, Todd, you need to get some sleep. But anyway... Candy was just like, yeah, you keep opening these restaurants, but that's not your real passion. Your real passion is like your your creative side, like your producing and all of that. And he was just like, yeah, his restaurants are what he will use to fund or and finance his own ideals, like his movies, right? 
And I get that. That's to me, that's a pretty smart move. You know what I'm saying? Like keeping that money within you, but also make it let having your money make you money. You know what I'm saying? So you're not really outsourcing, you know? So hey, sounds good to me. But anyway. So he he says he's gonna open the Mexican restaurant, the Ole Gang. And then after that will be Ace's Pizza. I said, okay. So we got Blaze, which is their baby girl. And then, okay, the Ace will have one named after him. Okay. So anyway, Melvin comes in, which we've all seen him before. That's Candy's nephew or cousin. I think it's her cousin um, that she kind of helped raise. And, um... So he's the chef for Blaze restaurant. So he come in with this big old sling on, right? Clearly hurt, but no one is talking about it. Like no one asked him how he was doing. You know, like nobody just acknowledged him being in this sling. And it, it was just kind of weird because like if one of my friends come in with this big old sling on and I know that they're hurt, which is why they're in the sling, I'm going to either be like, hey, what happened if I don't already know? And if I already know, it's going to be like, well, how are you feeling? Are you feeling better? You know, something to that effect. But anyway, no one says anything, right? So they bring out the food. They start testing the food. And one of the producers comes over and was just like, uh... Uh, are we not going to talk about the elephant in the room? So, yeah, I was really confused when he said this. Because I'm like, the elephant in the room? What's the elephant in the room? I was like, I don't really see any tension, you know, amongst the three of them. Like, so, what's what am I missing? You know what I'm saying? So, y'all, he was talking about the guy, about Mills and being in the sling and the reason behind it. That's what he was talking about when he said the elephant in the room. Uh, so, Candy and Todd pretty much, she's like, you know, we can't talk about that. That's still an le ongoing legal issue right now. So, and I'm thinking like, yeah, why would they talk about that on the camera? Like, it is what it is. It, it happened. It has nothing to do with what's going on now, you know. So, anyways, but. Yeah, um, apparently an employer or an employee, I'm sorry, at, I'm guessing at the OLG, um, they never really said, and I don't remember hearing about this in the news, but um, it happened, employee came in, disgruntled, upset, drunk, Melvin took him outside, he ended up shooting Melvin, and I was like, I'm glad that's all. He just walking around in the sling because it could have been a lot worse. So, uh, yeah. But anyway, Melvin did say he was doing good uh, after all of that. So, we see Kenya in Brooklyn. She's taking her to go play tennis. Oh, Brooklyn is just so adorable. So, she takes her to go play uh, tennis with one of her friends and her daughter, Akila. Um, so we find out that Akila is a wag. Don't think I've really heard that term before, but they made sure to supply us with the definition. <laughs> a wag is a wife or girlfriend to a sports star, apparently. So her husband plays in the NFL. So I'm thinking like... Both of them got all this money. Why are they playing tennis in the back of this store? <laughs> oh my goodness. Was that just me? Or did y'all think that too? <laughs> anyway, those little girls, they are having the time of their lives together. They are so cute. Kids said that they're best friends. So. We see Akila and Kenya. They sit down. They talk about Kenya's new boo, Mr. KMC, which is short for Kill Me Crazy. That's his business. And Akila said, well, if he isn't the one, honey, let me know and I will hook you up with, with 
with some people. I would line them up for you, honey, baby. <laughs> I said, see, I need me a sister like that on my team. Because, baby, she, she down for the get down. Go hook your girl up with one of your NFL players. So, Sonya is now breaking bread with Sheree. Sonya is just making her tour, baby. Sheree lets us know that she's a grandmother now. Or if she wants to be called a clam mom. Cairo has had a daughter, and she is so stinking cute. She is. And so, Sheree and Sonya, of course, they talk about the party as well. They bring up how Kenya called Martell aggressive, and Sonya was like, yeah, she said the same thing about Rose. You remember that? So, they make an issue about Kenya tearing down the black men by labeling them aggressive. Now, this is my opinion. My opinion. Martel seemed like he lived for moments like that to happen. Like it, it just seemed like it was right up his alley. Like the whole drama of this drama of it all. He just seems like he likes to be in the center of drama. That's how it was coming across. Because just how he went from zero to a hundred real quick over nothing. Like it just it just didn't warrant that. But anyways. He, he was doing the most, in my opinion. And there was, like, no reason for him to, to do that. No, there was no reason for him to explode the way he did. Like, if you didn't like it, you don't have to not like something. But there was no reason for him to just explode. He, he was out of line to me. But anyway, that was my opinion on it. So, Kenya is telling Akila about the, the issue with Martell at the party as well. And she said that she told Sheree about the DM because she just didn't want to keep it from her. And then she find out about it later on. Meanwhile, Sheree is telling Sonya that she don't want nobody to come in her with no half-ass half -ass information, basically. Like, if you coming to tell me something, you better have your receipts. You know what I'm saying? So, Kenya said she was angry with Sheree because... At the end of the day, they're supposed to be friends. And they both have been in like these non-healthy relationships before. Kenya said, <laughs> Kenya said Sheree is dick matized. <laughs> Akila was like, surely not in her big grown age. <laughs> eh? I know that's right. Oh, goodness. So, we see Drew and Ralph go to the recording studio and then meet up with this producer. And so, the producer asked Drew, like, why now? Why do you want to do your music now? Why are you pursuing it now? And so, Drew brings up how she sung Happy Birthday last year for a friend, i.e. Sheree. Yeah, I remember when she did that last year, even though she and Sheree were not in a good place, but she still put her feelings aside and song happy birthday to her um so she was just saying how she got so much positive feedback from it last year and it inspired her to pick her music back up again and just follow her dreams with it um the producer wanted to know well what's the dynamic between you and your husband like working together and drew said it's it's a happy place for the two of them, basically. So the two of them do a confessional together. And Drew said that music has kind of brought a balance in their life. I said, hmm. It just had me thinking, like, I wonder if there was a lot more tension in their marriage that we did, did not see. Because we've seen a lot. Now, mind you, we have... But I'm just wondering there because it just seems to have been a running thing this this season. And we're only two episodes in. But between the two episodes, it's kind of like we've got a lot about how their relationship is doing now. You know what I'm saying? Like, why is that a, a focal point? So I'm thinking it must have been bad, bad. And there was a lot of things we did not see. So anyway, 
They end up giving the producer a feel of what they do. Ralph gets on the keyboard and plays. Drew sings. So next we kind of see Sheree at the uh, <laughs> She by Sheree Distribution Center. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing at this, y'all. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. It's because she has taken over a decade to get this stuff out right, to bring it to fruition, finally happens, or so we think, and the people can't even get their orders or do what they got to do. And it's not good quality. The presentation, all the stuff be wrinkled. So, yeah, Sheree is there. There are only two workers. Two. So, Sheree is complaining that the stuff they have ready to ship out their day is wrinkled. So, the young lady's like, you know, I would prefer to see them. So, the presentation looks good. The gar the customers are not getting wrinkled garments. And Sheree worried about the coin. Is that going to cost me more? Hell yeah, this is going to cost you more, lady. Like, come on. See, she always try to scam. So, anyway... Sheree talks about being on Cloud 1000 after that fashion show and how she had received so much love behind it. But then, um, when everything went live, the website crashed. Sheree, was there ever really a website? <laughs> so she said she did a lot. She lost a lot of money behind it. Anyway. Kenya starts by, they get on Martell. Kenya said, well, I wasn't coming for him. Sheree said, but it, it didn't have to go there. Kenya said, tell me the part where I deserve to be cursed out. Of course, Sheree didn't have anything to say about that. Kenya said that she did watch his show and how she, you know, she just didn't like how he did his wife or his ex-wife. And Sheree said, well, he was really excited to meet everyone. And I really think y'all would get along. He said, I'm not interested in knowing him. And I know that's right. Honey, anything. So Sheree's thing is, well, we've talked several times. And not once did you ever try to tell me about that before. About him being in her DMs, right? I said, you know, that's that's a good point, Sheree. Like, Kenya, why haven't you mentioned it before? Like, why did you wait until the show, to the next season, to want to say something? I was like... That's, that's contrived drama to me. So, Kenya said, I didn't think about it until I saw you two together. I'm like, mm -hmm. now, Kenya, you, uh, Candy and Monietta were just talking about that. You could have picked up your phone when you left Candy house and been like, girl, I just want to let you know this and what's been going on. You know what I'm saying? So, anyway... Kenya line, Sheree line, because then Sheree talking about it with Martell had already shown me the DM. Sheree, now you know that it's the biggest BS because first of all, just last episode, you had uh, Martel saying he how he didn't know any of the girls and y'all specifically talked about Kenya for a minute. And then if you already knew about it, why was Martel acting brand new when he went to his DMs and was like, oh, I did DM her. That was two years ago. Why was he acting surprised like he was just now remembering that he had DM'd her two two years ago if he had already shown you? Like, come on now. So, and they don't focus on the real issue. They kind of go back and forth on when Sheree said Kenya, uh, uh, I'm sorry, they go back and forth like how Kenya said that it was about six months ago and Sheree was saying, well, you said it was six months ago. Ugh. Yes, exhausting. Uh, so they uh, I just said truth. Truth is, there was another message. I feel like it. We would never know what it was, what it said, because he's deleted that message. So the only one we have is the one from two years ago, and that's the one Sheree wants to believe has been sent. So yeah, Sheree is her, in her confessional. She said that she already knew about the DM. I told y'all about that. She kept saying, uh, well, I think you will like him. And King was just like, no. 
He was disrespectful. Sheree said, you were too. Y'all ambushed him. And I don't know about y'all, but I did not see anybody ambush him. But I am almost legally blessed, so there's that. <laughs> but I'm just saying, these eyes did not see that. <laughs> so Kim's like, no, don't do that. It's bros before hoes. Sheree said, no, it's hoes before bros. Kim said, no, we are the bros. <laughs> he is the hoe. <laughs> so Sheree and her confessional said King isn't taking accountability for her ashes, right? She's attacking him, but wants to say that he attacked her. King said, um, well, he said, I don't F with you. That didn't really bother me. But what did bother me was when he implied that I responded to all my DMs. Like, I'm just out here in these streets spreading the wild, basically. Cherie, Cherie tried to act like Cherie. I don't know why I keep wanting to call her Cherie. Cherie tries to act like um she didn't hear that part of the argument, right? Oh, I didn't hear that. But we get the little, little, little flashback where Martel walked straight up to Sheree and was just like, da 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 da, and then <laughs> walks off. Now he was talking to Sheree when he said it, but she didn't hear that part. Girl, get on out of here. Kenya was like, "Well, he's trying to say I'm a hoe and I sleep around." I was like, "Yeah, he was Sheree. I mean, he was Kenya." Sheree said, "You're making something out of nothing." Kenya said. Uh, you should you should hold him accountable. A man shouldn't speak to a woman like that, period. So in her confessional, Sheree said, Kenya, uh, what's your problem with calling black men aggressive? Are they public enemy number one because you don't have one? I'm just like, ugh. Kenya said, look at your past, Sheree, and the crazy things that you have accepted from men. Like, these are signs. There is never a scenario for a man to speak to a woman like that. Ken, you speaking truth right now. I had to say that you are speaking truth. Sheree said, you have to, um, you trying to uh, label these black men and black women. She back on this labeling. I'm just like, girl, stop. Sheree, Sheree ends up just asking Ken, you know, what do, what do you need to get past this? Kenya said, we're just going to have to agree to disagree on this one. Y'all, I'm just like, oh, child, these women, these women. Anyway, let me know what y'all thought about this week's episode. And as always, I'll pray for y'all. Y'all, please pray for me. And what? Bye, y'all.